Hi there, and welcome to Oily Wine. Have you ever been in a winery with friends, having a good time, wanting to bring back a good bottle of wine just to discover that the bottle you're eyeing is $70? Or have you ever been in a grocery store trying to find your friend's recommendation for a good Cabernet from California and discover that the bottle is $55 or $70? It happened to me when I first visited uh, wineries in California, in Paso Robles and Santa Barbara. I was quite shocked, frankly, by the price of wine here. Uh, in France, you can find a good bottle for like $15, $20, even Bordeaux. And even if for the more prestigious wines now, they're well sought after, and so you would need to spend more. But for a good bottle of wine, $15, $20 should give you some good stuff. So in this video, we'll try to understand why are California wines so expensive. First of all, the wine consumption between countries is different. If we keep the example of California and France, in France, people are drinking wine for centuries. People are used to drink wine with their meals, and those they expect uh, to be able to find affordable daily table wine. They also expect it to be of a good quality because of all the good wines that are present in France. And it's also true that more and more, uh, the wine consumption is decreasing in France and it's going more toward a cultural experience and more quality wine. But because of this history, people really expect to find decent price, affordable price. In the US, there is not that history of drinking wine with food for centuries. The European immigrants, when they came to the US, uh, kept doing that, kept having regularly wine with their meals. And then they're also the one who started to plant vineyards to be able to have their daily, daily wine. But uh, the prohibition happened. So in the 20s, because of the prohibition, the consumption went towards harder liquor and people lost the habit of drinking wine with their food. The wine consumption really restarted in the 70s to the mid 80s and was primarily driven by an educated population with high purchasing power. Today, only one third of the American population is regularly drinking wine, and it's still driven by this uh, population with purchasing, high purchasing power. And so there is an opportunity for the producer to, their, to sell their price at a, at a higher point, or to be able to have higher production costs to still be able to sell their wine. Secondly, uh, price are not only driven by demand, they're only also driven by production cost. And as we just discussed, production cost uh, is more flexible in the US or they can spend more on production costs because they can sell their one higher. But on the, on the cost side, so in California, the wineries are quite recent. Like the old California wineries are from the 60s and the 70s. And a lot of wineries are only 10, 20, 30 year old. And so that means that they had to start recently. And when starting, they had to buy land and vines. And as everyone knows, land is pretty expensive in California. Whereas in France, you have people who are winemaker for the third, seventh, 10th, 15th generation. And in this case, if they have the vineyards in the family for century, they didn't have to spend any money on, on land uh, in, a, in a recent time. They, of course, had to regularly uh, change their vines. Uh, vines live between 50 and 90 years. And so if you have a winery who is 90 years old, of course, they regularly have to purchase vines, but probably at a slower pace than when you start a winery and you need to acquire all the vines. So there is also a lot of equipment to buy when you start a winery on when you operate a winery. In both countries, uh, the wineries are quite uh, on the small side. So there is a lot of like family owned and operated wineries who of course as, uh, are not as big as like the massive wineries, the Gallo or the Mondavi uh, of the world. And of course, there is a certain amount of equipment that wineries have to buy. And so the smaller the winery, the smaller the production, the more or the higher the cost uh, per bottle. I think the difference is that uh, in, in, in the US, uh, there is more winery who has their own vineyards. 
so in France, uh, people are used to kind of split the work between uh, grape grower and, and winemakers. And so grape growers are used to sell their grapes to winemakers. And so in this case, they don't have to spend any money on winemaking equipment. And the winemaker, on the other hand, uh, they need to have a low price per bottle. And what they do, they're able to buy enough grapes from different grape growers to be able to produce enough to break even and, and make a profit. Whereas in California, uh, as it's new and it's an experience and people are experimenting, uh, winemakers want to own their vineyards in, in many cases and try to master the process. And, uh, and therefore, uh, they need to spend for the entire chain of grape growing and winemaking, they have a lot of uh, equipment to buy. So if we keep digging on, on this notion of uh, people wanting to own their vineyard and kind of master the entire chain in California, uh, the third point is kind of talking about philosophy of winemaking, which to me is one of the biggest difference between the two countries that gives that drives one of the biggest price difference between the two countries. So in France, uh, France has a winemaking tradition that is dating before Christ. So people are making wine for centuries and centuries. And thanks to the work of monks uh, early on, France determined which region or which soil was best suited for which varieties. So today, and it's written in law and in France, France is kind of divided between one region and each wine region only produce certain grapes. For instance, in Burgundy, you can only plant Chardonnay on the right, for the right grapes and Pinot Noir for the red grapes. So not only France is specialized uh, by grape varietal, but because of that, uh, people work only with a few grapes, and so they're only producing a few wine. Each winery only produce one to five wines. So in Bordeaux, some, sh some chateaux produce only one wine. Often they produce three, two, three, four wines. In other part of France, they produce also one to five different wines. Uh, so it's a limited amount of grapes and a li limited amount of, uh, of, of, of wines. And so it's kind of simplifying all the process and, and the chain. On the opposite side of the spectrum, the New World, California in particular, has a very limited history of winemaking. Winemakers are still experimenting which soil is best suited for which grapes. Even if since the 90s, a lot of progress has been made and no, people kind of know what grows best where. For instance, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay in Santa Barbara in uh, Southern California or in Northern California in Carneros, it's also well suited for Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. The, the difference, I think now all the, the winemakers want to experiment and want to be free to try new techniques or new varietals. And there is no law here against that. It's all about innovation and experience and experimenting. So as a consequence, every winery is, is producing many different wine. Each producer wants to produce white wine, red wine, sparkling wine. But the techniques to make them are vastly different. The equipment needed is vastly different. So they need to buy a lot of different equipments that increase their production cost. And on the other hand, their labor cost is also probably higher. One, because uh, labor cost is expensive in California, but it's also expensive in France. But as they try to make different wines from the same grape, but with different techniques, et cetera, different blends and experiment, they have a lot of processes that needs to be done at the same time, probably by a different person. Whereas in France, if you produce three wine, it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple process. So that's quite of a, a lot of information. So if we want to try to recap, uh, wine prices in the U.S. are pretty high, especially when compared to France, for three main reasons. So first, more adults are drinking wine in Europe and in France than in the U.S., and they're expecting wine to be affordable because they're used to drink wine with milk for, milk, with milk for centuries. Secondly, wine production is in the U.S. is pretty recent, and so as the wineries, most of them are 10, 20 years old, they add a recent cost of buying land, whereas in France, uh, some or many winemakers have the land in their family for generation, and so they didn't have to buy land in recent times. Moreover, cooperatives and wine merchants are way more uh, common in France than in Europe, 
where you kind of split the process between grape grower and winemakers. Third, a big difference and maybe the biggest difference in, in the, the winemaking philosophy and winemaking approach, where in the U.S. people want to experiment and try different techniques and produce vastly different wines all over the spectrum, whereas in France people are focusing on very few grapes and producing only one to five wines, driving the cost lower. That's it for this video about price difference for wine between California and France. I hope you enjoyed it. As usual, you can leave me a comment and let me know what is your favorite winery, what is your favorite red region, what do you think about French wine or California wine. You can also uh, let me know what you think about this specific video and subscribe to the channel. If you're interested in learning more about wine, uh, taking a uh, a class or attending a wine tasting, you can also check my Facebook page, Oddly Wined. As usual, enjoy your wine, but drink responsibly. Take care, cheers. <laughs>